You shall have no other gods before me. That is God's first commandment. But who is God? Certainly not an old man in the sky with his beard all trailing down into the clouds. And how, when we worship him, it's a whole heck of a lot more than just Sunday morning. Today we're talking about the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. What does that mean? Who is God anyways? Let's start right from the very top. Who is God? God is the divine person who created everything in the whole world. There was a Greek philosopher whose name is escaping me right at this moment but I think I'll put them up in the comments there. And his big philosophical conclusion was, it is. Now what does that mean? It means that there is something. Meaning, you exist, I exist, the world exists. There are people, there are animals, there are plants, there is a creation. We are. It is. There is something rather than nothing. And it's a great mystery. So this Greek philosopher summed up the mystery this way. He said, it is. Now here is the fascinating point. When Moses went up to the mountain and God spoke to Moses through the burning bush, and he said, Moses, you must go and free the people, my people, from the slavery of Pharaoh. Moses asked God, God, who shall I say is sending me? And God pronounced his name, Yahweh. And you know what Yahweh means? It means, I am, or I am who I am, or I will be who I will be, meaning basically, I exist. And through me, all things exist. So that great mystery that that Greek philosopher came up with, namely, there is something, something, rather than nothing, that mystery has a name. Yahweh, our God, I am, it is. But rather than it being kind of this impersonal, random confluence of events. Rather, that mystery has a name and a person and a personality. That mystery is God, our God, who created us and all things. That's who we worship. But not only does our God create us, God also sustains us. God continues to create things. God continues to give us food. God continues to give us to each other and our families. And God continues to love us and forgive us and do all kinds of wonderful things for us. God sustains our very life. And so we worship God for that. I think ultimately, though, we know the heart of God through Jesus Christ. We know that God had a plan for the world an order that the world was created in, right? We talked about that last week, God's law. And that that law was broken, though, uh, by us and is broken in the world through sin. And we suffer the consequences of that sin all the time. We commit wrong and we continue to commit wrong and wrong is committed against us and the world is just broken. 
But we know that the heart of God is to fix things. We know that the heart of God is to make things right, to make the world better, to make our relationship with each other and to make our relationship with God right again. And he did that through Jesus. Through Jesus, we know that the heart of God is to love and forgive. And that the seriousness of sin and brokenness is is so radical that, that God would sacrifice his son to death. But death didn't have the last word. Jesus rose from the grave. And he was resurrected. And we know that we and all of creation, in fact, all, everything that God created, will be resurrected as well and redeemed and recreated and made new. That's how we know the heart of God, through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And so, because of that, we worship God. That's the God we worship. Now, God says, you shall have no other gods. I am a jealous God. I don't tolerate you worshiping anything else other than me. That's because God loves us. I mean, think about this, right? You know, let's say you have a pet who you love very dearly, right? Or, um, you know, spouses know all about this, right? Uh, you have your, your wife or your husband, right? You, you don't want uh, that person or uh, to go off with other people. No, you, you, you love them. You want them for yourself. You know, if you, if you care about, I'm thinking of the kids now, if you care about your pet, what if, what if your pet up and decided, oh, I don't want you to be my family anymore. I'm going to be uh, with a different family now. How would you feel? You would feel terrible. You love and care for that uh, pet of yours, your, your little kitty, your doggy, your hamster, your, your turtle, whatever. You know, if it ran away, you would feel sad. You would want it back. It's that way with God. With everybody, in fact, in the whole world, because we're all loved dearly by God. And God wants us all to, to, uh, to be in a close relationship with Him. That's what the first commandment is all about. God saying, I choose you. Now, be in that relationship with me. That's the way the world is made well. That's the way that you live your life fully, is when you're in a full and complete and dedicated relationship with me. That's what God is saying in the first commandment. Love me above everything else because that's the way that life is made great. That's the way that you have abundant life. So you can think of it as a, as a good commandment. He's, God is saying, uh, you know, do this because it's good for you. You will know true joy and peace and happiness when you follow this commandment and trust in me alone and serve no other uh, gods or false gods or anything else in the whole world except me. That's how true peace and happiness is really found. I want to give that to you, God, God says. I want you to have that. So don't go running around and worshiping other things that won't fulfill you anyways. Come and worship me and you will know what it's like to know true happiness. The first commandment is very clear. We should not worship anything besides God. So how do we worship something besides God if God alone is who we worship. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, it's pretty clear, and this has happened throughout time, is that humans have wanted to worship idols. What is an idol? An idol is uh, something we look up to, uh, something we want to emulate, something uh, we uh, find hope or peace or satisfaction in. So. In the history of all humanity, people have made uh, idols out of wood uh, or metal, like silver or gold, or uh, stone. They've carved statues of, of figures of, of, of animals, of human-looking kind of creatures, of, of trees, of stars, of all kinds of things. And uh, especially in Moses' time, way back when, this was much, much more common. In fact, they had these holy trees everywhere called... Asherah poles and there was a goddess named Asherah and people would go to these places where these trees had been erected and had, had carve, carvings in them and they would go burn incense or offerings there because they thought this goddess 
Asherah and her holy tree would uh, help them, uh, would, would give them what they wanted. That if she, um, took, she uh, was worshipped in the correct way, then she would help these people out. So there you can see an example of an, of an actual idol and an actual false god. And God says, don't worship anything else. Don't call anything besides me, Yahweh, a god. Because none of those things are gods. I'm the only God, just so you know. I'm not talking about me, of course, but I mean God. Uh, actual God. Yahweh, our God. So, idols. Yeah, we don't really have in America a lot of those anymore. We don't have actual you know, carvings that we worship. Although, it's important to note this because, um, you know, even in our society today, we are tempted by false gods. Um, for instance, uh, Wicca is uh, tempted to make gods out of the earth, which is a creation of God. Uh, you know, trees or animals or creatures, you know, people believe that um, they have spirits that we can worship and pray to and they will help us. Uh, I don't know a ton about Wicca, but I know that it supplants the spiritual uh, uh, supremacy of God and uh, says that we can, we can have this spiritual knowledge uh, and power outside of God by worshiping and praying to and using uh, the spirits in nature. Now, that is a clear uh, violation of the first law, uh, the first commandment, which is we should only worship God. Uh, and that is in an explicit way. Uh, so that's one example. Um, so it still is present today. Actually, another good present day example, right? We have um, uh, pyramid power or, or crystal power or um, other talismans and tokens that, that people will wear or, or uh, people will um, use and pray and, 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 and uh, say that they have this magical spiritual power if they uh, have these things. That's an idol. That's an idol that we should uh, uh, stay away from because God says those material things those things that I created, God is saying, don't worship those things. I created them. I have the power. Not these things that I created. Rather, worship the creator of those things. That's what God is saying. The biggest way that we break the first commandment is by trusting in something other than God, most often ourselves. See, that's the biggest thing. We want to trust ourselves. We want to be in control. And when we try to be in control of everything, whether it is by uh, getting as much money as we can, or getting as much knowledge as we can, or getting as much stuff as we can, or, or, or trying to be the best at sports uh, because we'll feel good if we're number one, or, or anything like that, we're really not putting God first. We're really not trusting in God when we do that. Um, Martin Luther talked about, and he's our, our guide in all of these programs, Martin Luther talked about whatever you fear is your God. Whatever you fear is your God. Now, now think about that. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of failing your homework? You know, I used to be like that. I used to be, I remember in second grade, I uh, forgot to bring my homework in and the teacher was a little disappointed in me and I cried. I cried because I was so uh, scared of disappointing my teacher. I, all I wanted was her approval. All I wanted was her to like me and the kids to think I was smart. And I worshiped that f achievement. That's where my fear was. And if I lost it, that feeling of being the best, the feeling of achieving and doing everything perfectly, uh, I felt crushed. My identity was crushed. See, that's the thing. Where do you find your identity? Where do you find your meaning in life? Where do you find your purpose? If you find your identity or your meaning or your purpose in something other than God, you're worshiping that thing and you're breaking the first commandment. So whether it be, maybe you find your meaning and purpose in sports and all your focus is on being the best at that sport and you, and you sacrifice being a part of God's community and you sacrifice participating in worship and, and your mind is just bent on, 
on, on practices and strategies and, and, and doing the best you can at that and you forget about worshiping God or, or, or participating in God's community, you're, and, and the thing you most fear is not succeeding at that sport, that's your God. That's your God. But it can be all kinds of things. It can be relationships. Uh, it can be a, a relationship with a girl that you like or a boy that you like or a, a, a friend that you want where you spend all of your energy and your time uh, thinking about that relationship and, and trying to impress that person and, and if that person is disappointed in you, you're disappointed in it, and it crushes you deep down inside. It's more than just like, oh, I, I want to get along with that person because God wants me to get along with people. It's more like, oh, if that person doesn't get along with me, something is wrong with the world. And you're afraid of, of that person disapproving or approving of you. That's worshiping someone, not God. It's really easy to do. See, but when we, when we worship God and we put God first in everything, all that other stuff comes into perspective. When we really love and trust and fear God alone above all else, sports and relationships and money and stuff, they don't have the power anymore to crush us inside. They don't have the power anymore to um, threaten our identity. Because when we fear and trust God above all else, we know that God is our dear Father who loves us. And if we don't fit in with a team or a group of friends, we know we always fit in with God and God's people. So we don't have to be afraid of that. Or uh, our purpose in life, going back to the sports example, right? If, um, if we fear and love, love and trust God above all else and we don't happen to be the best in the sports team, well, that's okay. You know, we had a good time. It was exercise. Uh, I got to hang out with all my friends. I got to glorify God by uh, using the body that God gave me. But you don't feel crushed inside. You're not all wrapped up in it. Your purpose in life is, is bigger than just that game. It, your purpose in life is loving God and loving God's people. And so if you don't accomplish this one task, you still know that, your purpose in life isn't that sports team, but rather to be a part of God's family, to serve God and serve God's people. Do you see what I'm saying? Putting God first, fearing and loving God above all else, puts everything else in perspective. That's what it means to fear and love and trust God above all else. That's what it means to have no other gods, as the first commandment puts it. We follow the first commandment then when... We always turn to God first. That's why it's the first commandment, really, is because it's also the primary commandment. It's the most important commandment. It's the one we need to be worried about following the most. Because really, when we follow the first commandment, all the other ones kind of come into place. So what does it mean, then, to follow the first commandment day to day to day to day? How do you do that? You do that by thinking and turning to God in every situation. You do that by thinking of God and turning to God in every situation. What does that look like? Okay, let's walk through a typical day, right? How do we fear, love, and trust God above all else on a typical day? Well, you wake up in the morning and you go, you could, you could have two reactions, right? You wake up in the morning and go, ah, oh, another day. Or you could do as the scripture says and you could say, wow, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And maybe you don't even feel the best, but at some level you go, God has made this day and given me this day to live for Him and His glory and for the love of all the people God has put in my life. Okay, so you can start the day that way. Maybe you eat breakfast and you think, Oh, I have to eat this cereal again. Or you can go, Wow, I have food to eat. God has provided for me. And maybe it's not your favorite cereal. And maybe you're like, oh, I really don't want to eat this cereal. But you can also say, thank you, God. I get to have something to eat this morning. Okay, and then you go to school. Oh, I don't want to go to school. Now, again, who are you thinking about? You're thinking about you. You're thinking about how you're feeling. You're not thinking about God. You're not worshiping God. You're worshiping yourself there when you're only thinking about you and how you feel. Now, 
Are your feelings important? Yes, of course they are important. They're very important. God wants to know all about your feelings. And that's how we fear, love, and trust God, is we turn to God with all of our feelings. The whole book of Psalms is full of songs and poems about people going to God when they're angry or when they're frustrated or when they're lonely or when they're afraid. God loves to know all about our feelings. When you turn to yourself to try to fix them, that's when you're loving and fearing and trusting yourself most. But when you give your feelings to God, that's how you love and serve and trust God. That's how you have no other gods before God. So let's say you're frustrated about going to school or you're worried about a test or something like that, right? You get to school and you're thinking, oh, I can't believe it. I have to be at school another day. How do you love and trust God in that situation? You pray. Or even you talk to one of your friends, a godly friend that you have at school. You say, man, I'm having a hard time being at school today. you know, But I know that I'm here because God wants me to learn as much as I can so that I can use that knowledge to love other people. Uh, that's why I'm here. That's my purpose is to uh, learn, serve God. And I can serve God right now by learning as much as I can and doing my best. And maybe your friend who's a Christian too can go, yeah, it sucks sometimes to be at school. You know, it's not always fun. It's not always uh, the most exciting thing to do. But you're right. There's a bigger purpose at work here that God has given you. And uh, you know what? I bet God will bless you this day too. Let's pray together about it. And you can pray together with your friend. You can say, yeah, God bless me to this day and help me to see what you're doing in this day. That's how you follow the first commandment is you make every moment of every day as much as possible about God and what God is doing in your life. So those are just a few examples about how to do it, about how to stop worshiping yourself and how you feel and to start worshiping God. And, and be regarding and thinking about and putting God first in your heart, in your mind, and in your soul. I hope that uh, you guys have enjoyed listening to this movie today. And uh, I hope you learned a little bit more about what it means to uh, worship God and follow the first commandment. Um, Make sure that you fill out your response form before Saturday, or at least by Saturday next week. I really enjoyed the comments from last week's uh, response page that you guys fill out with your parents. Uh, pass this movie along to your friends if you uh, think that's great, or if you want to uh, discuss it with them. Put comments below uh, here on the YouTube page. Um, but I look forward to seeing you at Catechism Class on Sunday. If you have any questions or comments, you can uh, write a comment down here at the YouTube page or you can uh, send me an email. I look forward to uh, seeing you on Sunday. God bless as you try to follow uh, the first commandment this week.